Another concept you need to take note of is how to identify threats. So in identifying threats, we have what we call the intrusion detection systems. Intrusion detection system could be network-based intrusion detection system, or it could be host-based intrusion detection system. So if you have a network-based, it means the intrusion detection is scanning your network to identify intrusions and also uh, for host base, that means it's scanning your host, which is your device. And remember in the last uh, slide, in the last point we were making, we were talking about threats. So intrusion detection system helps to identify threats, you know, that are already an intrusion or that are existing within your network. So when, when you have an intrusion, it means the threat is already within your network. You are trying to detect it now. And then we have the CM2, which is Security Incident and Event Management. This is a tool that is very common uh, that is set up on your network to monitor the network and monitor devices to these are tools to you need to take note of in identifying threats within your network another concept you need to take note similar to this is how to prevent threats so in preventing threats you make use of tools like antivirus you know which scans your system you make use of tools like firewalls which protect your network also protect your devices and then the ips and nips which is basically intrusion prevention system and this is a network, could be network intrusion prevention system or host-based intrusion, just like we have in the intrusion detection. Intrusion prevention is actually stopping the threat from coming into your network. Why intrusion, intrusion detection stops, you know, it identifies what is in your network. Prevention prevents it from coming. So antivirus scans work well because at the point of entry where the virus or the uh, threat is trying to come in, the antivirus picks it up and then this allows it from coming. The same thing with firewall. Firewall contains rules that doesn't even allow such traffic containing threats to come into your system. And then we have the intrusion prevention system. This is a system that you can set up to ensure that you prevent threats from coming in. So these concepts are very common or very important for you to understand in domain four of cyber IS2, IS2 cyber security uh, examination. Another concept you need to take is the concept of ports and protocols. So Ports and protocols, we are talking about networks and services. So uh, ports, like we explained earlier, ports are like the point of entry of traffic or data into your device or into your network. Or you basically use it for device. And protocols are services. You know, these are like rules that are guiding the way uh, services or your system works, operates you know, on the, the service in which your system control the data and control the flow of traffic. These are protocols. There are rules that guide this thing. So when we have uh, imports, we have two major kind of ports. You know, we have physical ports and logical ports. So physical ports are the hardware ports like LAN ports for wires and cables. So when you look at your switches, you see openings behind your city where you plug in the cables. These are physical ports. So these are uh, LAN ports. Then and, and ex another, uh, on the other hand, logical ports are not visible. You know, they are not physical. You cannot see them. They are things uh, that determines uh, services. These are ports on which services run. For example, you open your web browser. Your web browser is running uh, HTTPS traffic in and out of your system. These are going in and out of the system through certain logical ports. So we have ports like port 80, port 443, port 21, port 22. All these ports are for different services like maybe file transfer, you know, your SSH going in and out of your system. So Ports are basically points of entry and exit of traffic and data into your systems, and you need to take good notes and understanding of these two. Another concept you need to be conscious of is on-premises data centers and their requirements. So these days we have data centers because of cloud. You know the issue of cloud makes uh, data centers more you know prominent these days. So and when you are talking about cybersecurity, these are places that are prone to attack. So Certain things you need to take note of while running your data centers or while talking about cyber security of data centers are uh, power, the power that runs in your data center, then the high, volt, uh, high voltage or AC. These are things that ensure that your data centers are running up and they are up and running. And cyber security attacks can be conducted on these things. So you need to take note of this. Fire suppressions are uh, also things you need to take note of. Redundancy. Memorandum of understanding and uh, memorandum of association. These are uh, these are issues or concepts that you need to get familiar with in IC cybersecurity domain four, which we are, we are where we are all talking about network 
security. The another very important concept is the importance of managed service provider and SLE. SLE is service level agreement. No MSP is managed service provider. And these things are very important concepts. You need to understand the relationship between an MSP and your client or your organization and also how to uphold or to stay by the dictates of a service level agreement that you have with your client or your organization is si signing with a provider, a service provider. So these are concepts that are very germane to ISC2 certified in cyber security. Then we have a concept of cloud and its characteristics. So cloud is trending these days. Almost everything is in the cloud. So and it's important that you understand cloud as a cyber security professional. So there are cloud service models. So different cloud service models in, include SAS, IAS, PAS. So SAS is software as a service. IAS is infrastructure as a service and then we have platform as a service so later in this video we explain this in the terminologies what each of these models means but these are concepts you need to understand and look out for while studying we also have cloud deployment models so cloud deployment models these are the ways in which cloud uh, systems can be set up for the clients use or for your organization use. so we can have a public cloud you know, public cloud is a cloud set up for public access. You know, clouds that people like Google and Microsoft they make they have public clouds for people to use. Then we have private cloud. Private clouds are usually owned by the organization that is you know set up its own cloud. Then we have community clouds. These are clouds deployment models that are set up for a targeted group of people, maybe a group of uh, practitioners or maybe a particular kind of discipline, maybe military. You know, a community of military, a community of gamers. You know, these are cloud. These are cloud that are related to community. So this is a deployment model, and then we have an hybrid. An hybrid is basically a mix of both, maybe public and private and community. Or when you mix these different models together, you form an hybrid. So these are key and fundamental concepts you need to understand. Another thing you need to understand under cyber security, IAC to cyber security, uh, certified in cyber security for network security which is domain four is common ports and protocols so you need to get familiar with the common ports and protocols that we have uh here is a list of them but these are the common ones uh i have one three four five six seven eight nine ten common ports here we have the insecure and the secure alternative so when we say the insecure it's basically and a version that is older that has found that uh that has been found to have certain loopholes then we have a more secure version of it which is the alternative secure port so when you look at the uh insecure ports we have port 21 which is the ftp port the file transfer protocol this is a service that run on these ports like i explained earlier ports you know there are points of entry and these are logical ports please take note of that these are logical ports so when you say port 21 you're talking about ports for ftp service port 23 for telnet port 25 for simple mail transfer protocol known as smtp port 37 for time protocols port 53 for dns domain name services port 80 for hypertext transfer protocol and then we have uh the other ones imap snmp smb and ldap so we have the secured alternative the secured alternative for port 21 is port 22 which is secure file transfer protocol and port 22 is also used for secure shell which is an alternative to telnet because these services almost they run similar uh functions so that is why it so it seems as if a duplicated service running on same port so it depends on the configuration of your system so you need to conduct a check when you have access to your system to see what ports are running on your system so for you to be able to identify then we have port 587 as a secured alternative for smtp port 25 then ports 1 to 3 as secured alternative for time protocol of uh, which is on port 37 uh port 853 which is domain name service over tls which is a secured version of port 53 then we have port 443 which is the https Secure the alternative to port 80 and like that 993 161 for SNMP 2049 for network file system 636 for LDAPS, you no know, lightweight direct access protocol. So these are common protocols 
um, their associated ports 